are the focal lengths I go to for my wildlife photography. Welcome to uh, Camilla and I. This is my YouTube channel. I'm Mark Cooper and this is where we do wildlife photography and equipment reviews of the actual equipment I use. So I thought today on Camilla and I I would go through my lens selection. So the focal lengths I use on Camilla and I go from the 90mm macro lens f2.8 to the 600mm f4. In between I've got the 135 f1.8, the 100 to 400 f5.6 to 4.5, and the 200 to 600 f6.3 to 5.6. So what I thought I'd do today is go through the reason for purchase and the order in which I purchased them for my wildlife photography. So the first lens I'd advise anybody to buy for wildlife photography is a 90mm or 100mm macro. Um, this one's a uh, superb lens from Sony, the f2.8. Only a G series lens, but it's the 10th sharpest lens in the world. So if you discover you haven't got the patience for small butterflies and insects, you're probably not suited to wildlife photography in the first place. So it's not a bad idea to get this lens because it also doubles as a portrait lens. Absolutely superb. So uh, you won't have wasted your money. So this is definitely the first lens I would have in my wildlife collection. The macro 90mm f2.8. Absolutely superb. The next lens I'd go for in the Sony range is this 200 to 600. Again, a G-series lens. And uh, certainly you could go for a 150 to 500 millimeter or 150 to 600 millimeter zoom. It's that flexibility that gets you in close enough to the wildlife. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing a subject and not being able to get close enough to it. And indeed, many people's first experience of wildlife photography is a few dots in the sky where birds are supposed to be. So this lens gives you a chance to get in close whereas normally you wouldn't get a hope with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens for example. So the 200 to 600 is an all-round small birding lens I'd suggest. Absolutely superb. So I'd definitely buy that next. The next lens I'd choose is the 100 to 400 f4.5 to 5.6 G Master lens from Sony but obviously there are other equivalents and this is a superb optical lens. The reason I purchased this is for its flexibility. It's a good walk around lens all day long. You can wear it on a chest harness and um, it's not too bad to carry around. Um, it's still quite heavy, but not as heavy as some of the other longer lenses. And it does give you a 400 millimeter reach. And also it has a macro capability it's not actually a macro lens, it won't give you one-to-one -one magnification, but it will give you a close focus distance of around a metre, which enables you to get a small postcard size image, ideal for a dragonfly or butterfly. So it's a one-size-fits-all lens, this one, in the wildlife collection, and it's well worth purchasing, even though it is a bit expensive, and it's more expensive than the 200 to 600 partly because it's a G-Master lens. So again, it depends what wildlife you're into and how much weight you can support. This is a very good option for a lightweight setup. And indeed, you could go around all day with just a monopod very happily. The reason Camilla and I use this lens is in backup to the 90mm macro in the summer, we'll actually take around two bodies with us and one will have this lens on and the other one the 90mm macro and this is a very good combination for dragonflies, butterflies and insects. Sometimes in wildlife photography you just want to go for sheer speed 
and fast action and indeed a lot of our action happens in low light conditions so you need a 1.8 or 2.8 a very fast lens which enables you to take shots in gloomy and dark conditions where otherwise you wouldn't have been able to so a very useful option and that's why in our kit bag we have the 135 f 1.8 so the last lens in our lineup is obviously the biggest really when you get to this level of wildlife photography you have a choice between a 400 f 2.8 and a 600 millimeter f4 on Camilla and I we went for reach and very glad we did because it's a similar sort of price bracket as the 400 f 2.8 the 600 f4 there's about a oh, thousand pounds in it the teleconverters work great on both lenses both the f 1.4 and the two times converter we went for the 600 millimeter f4 and the reason I went for this over the 400 was the fact that I would probably permanently have the 1.4 teleconverter on the 400 to try and get the reach because most of our shots at the moment on Camilla and I are small birds and subjects along this line which require 600 millimeters and indeed with a 400 f 2.8 with a 1.4 you'd still only get 560 millimeters of reach and it would still be an f4 and I felt that 1.4 converter would probably be on the lens all the time and I think this was the correct choice and indeed if you had the two times converter on the f2.8 you'd get an 800 millimeter f5.6 but with this I can have a 1.4 teleconverter on it and get an f5.6 840 millimeter lens so that's why we've gone long on this particular occasion and um, yeah I'm very glad with my decision it was a long and hard choice between the two because I wasn't going to buy both lenses if you're in Africa or on safari the 400 f 2.8 with its lower light gathering capabilities may be better for the larger animals but it's not what we do here on Camilla and I as you know we do local accessible wildlife photography and if we are ever allowed to leave the country again which is looking debatable at the moment what would I take on holiday well I would take the 90 millimeter macro lens the 135 the 100 to 400 and the 200 to 600 paired with the Sony a1 and the Sony a92 at the moment but we're not going anywhere apart from here so that's why you've got another equipment review anyway let me know in the comments below what's your favorite combo of uh, wildlife equipment at the moment what do you use um, as a photographer normally you always go for glass and um, indeed glass never goes out of style but uh, the bodies do they chop and change so it's always a good idea to invest in glass as a wildlife photographer but does that apply today with the lights of the Sony A1 which I'm still reviewing at the moment um, yeah I mean a tremendous camera and uh, would I buy the Sony A1 before the 600 millimeter a question I suppose for another day but uh, yeah at least glass never goes out of style so yeah again in the comments below what's your choice camera body or glass the cameras are so good now the sensors are so amazing perhaps all we'll need for wildlife in the future is a 135 f 1.8 and the 70 to 200 millimeter lens Ooh, wouldn't that be awesome and oh a lot lighter weight thinking on my back anyway thanks for watching my extensive uh, lineup of wildlife glass and um, hopefully it's given you an idea of the sort of uh, lengths you have to go to as a wildlife photographer um, 
eventually. Uh, you don't need them all. And indeed, I spend most of my time at the moment with going around with just this combination. We're testing out the Sony A1 with the 600 F4. And, uh, ooh, ooh, wow. It's looking good, is all I can say. Anyway, keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe because we're getting some tremendous shots with this combination. So thanks for watching Camilla and I. Have a good one. Goodbye from Camilla and I.